Care. The controversial Universal Credit Program, which rolls six benefits into a single payment, was meant to cover one million people by last April. But the program has been reset amid continuing problems. It is now being rolled out to another 90 job centres and more changes are to be made. To date, uh, around 11,000 are actually on the pathfinders. Uh, we are now rolling out uh, to, started that rollout to another 90 sites beyond the 10 sites that we were doing the pathfinder in. There will be further changes and further uh, enhancements and we expect and believe, according to the plan that we laid out, uh, that everybody will be on by 2017. I think it's the first time I haven't heard the Secretary of State say his project is on time and on budget, but we still hear total and utter complacency. Mr Speaker, at this rate of progress, it will take a staggering 1,052 years before universal credit is fully rolled out. So what do we have? Universal credit delayed, personal independence payments delayed, employment and support allowance delayed. Doesn't the Secretary of State realise that his incompetence is not only wasting tens and hundreds of millions of pounds of taxpayers' money, but it's also causing untold yeah. pain and hardship for some of the most vulnerable people in our country. Yeah. This department and this government has entered into the biggest welfare reform programme and we are getting more people into work, record numbers in work, record falls in unemployment, more young people into work, more young people who have been long term unemployed back in work. The benefit cap uh, has moved 42,000 people have been capped, 6,000 as a result have moved into work, universal credit 600,000 claimant commitments signed, uh, universal job mat has 6.9 million people registered, the work programme Program. No, she doesn't want to hear this stuff because these are all records of success of welfare reform. The government is also reforming benefits for disabled people. Last week, two reports raised concerns about the rollout of the employment support allowance and the personal independence payment. Both have significant backlogs of applications. Leaked memos reported by the BBC on Friday showed that ESA is one of the largest fiscal risks currently faced by the government. What is the minister going to do about that? Uh, Mr Speaker, no government of any, of any description talks about leaked documents. But what I can say, the information within that document was not new. I've released most of that information out before, and the BBC worked up a story for their own benefit, I do believe. But it's not just to you saying, um, uh, Mr Speaker, that, that there's a huge backlog. There's also a huge backlog with the carrying out and make, making decisions on the um, independent the PIP, the uh, the personal independence payments, and there's also a huge backlog when it comes to universal credit. Only um, 7,000 people have been through in total have been through universal credit, when at this stage it should have been around a million. Um, when you see those kind of figures, Mr. Um, Speaker, it would appear that the passport fiasco pales into insignificance. Does the, the minister think that his department is simply bitten off far more than it can chew? No, I don't, Mr Speaker. The Minister for Disabled People admitted to the Work and Pension Select Committee on the 10th of June that there were 712,000 work capability assessments outstanding. And included in that were 234 recipients of incapacity benefit who are to be assessed for ESA and 84,000 incapacity benefit cases which have not yet been migrated. My constituents would like to know whose fault is that, Atos or the Minister's? Mr Speaker, uh, when this, uh, the, the coalition government came in, into uh, government, it didn't suddenly happen there was a backlog and a problem at WCA. That problem was in place before. However, we do take responsibility for what we're doing, and there's no point the Labour Party shouting us down because they have short memories. Their backlog was there, and if they don't wish to uh, admit that, perhaps we can see the documents and that way we will know. Would my honourable friend agree that it would have been cynical if we had simply turned our back on all of those existing claimants and not considered them too. That, of course, has been the cause of much of the backlog. I was recently able to inform a constituent they're about to receive a cheque for over £5,000. Welcome news until you realise it's an arrears payment for a personal independence claim submitted some 300 days earlier. 
Uh, what is the minister tells us he's addressing the matter. What is it he's doing to stop disabled people being out of pocket by so much for so long? I have a number of very sick constituents who have been pushed into severe financial hardship because of the unacceptable delays to the PIP process. Some of them now dependent on food banks. I listened carefully to the minister earlier, but will he set out a timetable for clearing the backlog, not just for terminally ill applicants, but for all applicants? And what interim support will he offer those having to wait more than 28 days. Last week I met a constituent who only received her husband's personal independence payment after he had passed away. Can the Minister guarantee that no one else will be suffering this deeply distressing uh, situation in the future? It's really very important that we get the scheme around faster, <laughs> but the quality to be run, run right. And uh, I'm, it's really very, very sad when this sort of thing happens, but I can't possibly say to the House that I can guarantee that not going to happen. We've just got to make sure it doesn't happen uh, as often, very often. I've been sickened. There's no other way to describe my uh, feelings by the indifference, complacent indifference, Mr Speaker, to the agonising hardship suffered by the most vulnerable in our society. The Secretary of State should be ashamed of the policies he's pursued. Can I say to the honourable gentleman, I think the only sickening thing is the last government plunging this economy into such a crisis that more people fell unemployed and fell into hardship directly as a result of the incompetence of the people that he has progressively supported. The Work and Pension Secretary, Ian Duncan-Smith. Now, Britain is on a road to disaster. 